I found this uh, hyperbolic functions uh, notes online, and I appreciated the sort of definition statement, and then a quick jump to the uh, Euler identity equation uh, here, uh, co hyperbolic cosine squared minus hyperbolic sine squared equals one. And they just said, for proof, simply substitute the definitions and watch the terms cancel. All right, so let's do that in the physics derivation graph. So here I am at derivationmap.net. I'm gonna go to my navigation page here, uh, and I'd like to start a new derivation. I happen to already be signed in through Google, so I can do that. Uh, and I happen to have uh, some notes here on what I want to call that derivation. So I'm gonna copy and paste here out of my clipboard. And then I also happen to have the site URL listed. So I'll paste that in rather than type it. All right, so I'm gonna start with the definitions as they were described uh, on the website. So I'm gonna declare an initial expression. I'm gonna type in the, the hyperbolic cosine. Now this happens to already be saved in my form field because I've typed this before. Uh, but I'm gonna type that LaTeX and then preview what that LaTeX expression renders in using MathJax. All right, so we'll submit that expression. All right, so now we see uh, the node and edges directed graph preview um, of the LaTeX and the inference rule that we're using. So that looks good, no need to modify anything. And then I get a abstract syntax tree produced from SymPy of that expression. So it's like the, the guess that SymPy is making from this LaTeX expression. That looks pretty reasonable. Um, and if I look down here, I actually see, uh, it's not quite what I intended because what it's showing is the, the, the EXP from LaTeX as the uh, exponential for the E is being treated as a function, which is why down here, when I take this SymPy representation and look at it in LaTeX, it looks not quite as I intended. So let's edit that. I'm basically going to uh, replace the, uh, the function exp string with just the letters uh, exp. So I'm doing that uh, in my clipboard, on my text editor, and then I'm gonna paste that back in here. So now you can see all I've done is replaced where it has function parentheses, single quote exp, single quote parentheses, with just the SymPy exp function. So I'm gonna update that. And when I update the SymPy, it doesn't actually change anything from the LaTeX, so that's the same. But if we scroll down here, now we can see that the SymPy representation of that expression has changed. So that's what we typed in manually. So basically we've manually updated that SymPy representation. With that completed, um, because this is an initial uh, expression der uh, declaration, there is no validation for this step, so there's nothing to see here. Now that we've provided the LaTeX for the expression and we've converted into the appropriate SymPy representation, now we want to declare what that variable is. We want to link it back to the physics derivation graph database of variables. And so the candidates for X here, I'll just scroll through these options. So over here, basically I see the, the LaTeX is X, it's also going to return all the x's that are currently in uh, variables in the database. So I see a bunch of other options here. Um, and so, for example, the x that I'm using right now is not actually position. And you can see that's where it shows up in these other derivations. And so it's this first x uh, with the ID number 1464. So it's being used in all those other derivations. So I'm going to link it to that specific character. I'm going to click on update the symbols. And now I get a message that there are no unmatched symbols in this uh, LaTeX versus SymPy comparison. So that's good. And I see that there is, uh, these are all the symbols. There's only one used in this derivation. Okay, so let's accept these and add another step because we have another declaration to work with. So I'm going to type in INI and I get back all the inference rules that 
have the characters I and I. So I'm going to declare an initial expression. Again, if I type cinch, I've already actually typed that in before in the form. And we'll do a quick preview of what that looks like. Okay, so that's the hyperbolic sign function that we're interested in. Again, same process. Review the LaTeX. Review the abstract syntax tree. I note again that because my SymPy to LaTeX parser is confused by this exp, I'll have to replace that. So let's do that part. And just update the string here. I'm going to uh, update that SymPy. Okay, so nothing here has changed, but now the SymPy representation of that and uh, the equivalent LaTeX generated from the SymPy look uh, correct. Again, nothing to validate, so we'll move on to the symbols. Again, I'm going to use the same X, so I happen to know it's 1464. Um, and then none of these other variables are relevant, so I'm going to update using that symbol. Okay, again, um, there's nothing to be done here other than just move on to the next step. Right, now I'm going to multiply uh, both of the expressions. So I'm going to have to square the cosh and square the cinch. So how am I going to do that? I'm going to multiply this expression by this expression. So here, instead of typing in the expression again, it's already in the derivation. And so I'm going to pull a local uh, expression that I previously referenced. And then the thing that I'm going to create, which has not been typed before, is uh, cinch uh, squared. But I can sort of use my form fill-in to get that. So I'm going to square this. I'm going to type left and right. And I'm going to copy all that string. This is a new expression, right? It hasn't been seen before. I'm going to paste that in there. So now let's preview what that looks like. That is cinch squared uh, is equal to these two, and that's the output when I have these two locally defined expressions as input. All right, so let's review the LaTeX and the AST. So this is our nodes and edges uh, picture of the directed graph. And then my AST, this is what I put in, is the symbol. So now see that it recognized, it's, it's Calling that that symbol x was already defined for that first expression. And similarly, the x was previously defined for the, the second input expression, so nothing to change there. And the SymPy representations look correct. Now, one thing you might notice is that over here, now the LaTeX generated by SymPy looks weird, right? Because we've done that variable substitution. That didn't actually change anything in the original LaTeX expression, but SymPy now treats this as a indexed variable. All right, lastly, the output expression that we typed in, we'll have to do some cleanup there, both in terms of the the, EX, the function, the exp replacement. So if we scroll over here, we can see that that is wrong. So I'm gonna paste that out of there. So I'm gonna type in my new revised SymPy expression. I did a find and replace outside of there. All right, so again, I just have to scroll all the way back down to my, my input expression. And now I see that that, I typed in the wrong, Okay, so it's squared there. So the, the LaTeX representation is simplified from already. Okay, so ideally here, the inference rule of multiply expression one by expression two uh, would be checked. For some reason, it failed. If we want to see down there, it says trace ID is not defined. So that's a bug I'll have to go fix. But uh, ideally, the inference rule here could have been validated. All right. So there's some dimension check that failed because our, uh, our validity check failed. There's uh, a symbol called right, but that's just the, the parser being confused by the left-right parentheses.
All right, so let's just review the derivation at this point and see what that looks like. We've got the D3JS representation, and slightly more readable is the uh, the graph here. So I've got the the graph is presentation of the directed graph has the three steps that we've put in so far. So that all looks reasonable. Um, and then I'm going to add another step. So let's square the the hyperbolic cosine. I'm going to use my locally defined expressions that I previously put in for Cauch. Uh, so those are my two input expressions. And then I think I've previously typed Cauch squared, so that will just be the same as I had before. I can use my preview. That's what the LaTeX is going to render as. OK, so uh, the LaTeX looks good as a directed graph. I uh, AST for the first and second input expressions looks correct uh, and it's rendering correctly. And then uh, as my third uh, expression, it's going to have that same function EXP that I have to fix. Right, so I did a find and replace in a text editor, so now I have a revised SymPy expression that I'm going to update the database with. The LaTeX didn't change, my ISTs are the same. Uh, and now that also failed, and we can see why the same problem as we had before. So there's no new symbols because it recognized that X is the same X as before. And we're going to add another step. We'll subtract x. Uh, subtract for the two expressions. So we've squared coach, we've squared cinch, and now we're going to subtract those two. So let's use those two expressions. I'm going to subtract uh, coach squared. Uh, let's see, actually, let's switch that up. Cinch squared from coach squared. I'm going to get back out. Cinch. So uh, this is my my cinch is my expression one. And we're going to subtract that from cosh of x two. I'm going to do a bunch of copy paste in here. That was this minus that. Change these to pluses because it was for cosh. Right, so that is a lot of text editing to do, so I'm not confident yet. So let's do a text preview of that expression. So I subtracted uh, the cinch from, I subtracted the cinch from cosh, and then I have the cosh squared and the cinch squared as my LaTeX output. So I look, I think I'm happy with that. Let's submit there. So you can see the, the expressions are getting quite lengthy at this point. Uh, but I have two inputs, one output, so that's the right directed graph. And I've got my uh, my abstract syntax tree of cinch squared. And I've got it for my cosh, uh, sorry, that's cinch squared. And my AST still has the XP rather than the function, so that's good. Same thing down here. And then let's see if it got, caught the uh, the same issue with EXP. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a find and replace on all these. So I'll do that in a separate text editor. All right, so that's the very long SymPy representation for that uh, AST. And now we'll scroll all the way down again, and at the very bottom we should now see this. This is a corrected uh, SymPy representation. Let's see. So it looks like my my step validation uh, almost worked. It says the left-hand side difference is negative 2, and the right-hand side difference is negative 2. So that should have simplified to be equivalent, but I'm not sure why that didn't work out.
Anyways, so the step validation almost worked. All right, so there it's looking for what is the value of x. We'll associate that with the right symbol. And we'll update that. And then we'll accept and uh, review this derivation. So there's the d3.js, slightly more readable uh, graph is representation. So we have the steps there for multiplying, uh, squaring that. And we're going to do the same thing over on the coach side so it comes up from the bottom. And that's our state there. Now eventually, uh, we'd add a few more steps to simplify this expression and we get back the Cosh squared minus sin squared is equal to negative one. But that's the idea at the bottom of this. So the third representation of this derivation is all the steps that we've put in and their validity that we saw previously. So this is sort of a summary of this graph content up here. Now let's go back to the, so this isn't the completed derivation, but I'm gonna uh, skip the simplifying steps because they're pretty much the same as what we've seen before. Now we can see that we have 40 derivations.